Uh, we live? Uh, we live? Seems good. Let's continue with space exploration. Wherein we need to do thermofluid and blank data cards. Uh, I'm thinking maybe I'll do the blanks. Take a little break from this thermofluid mess. Um, we've already done all of this. I think we can remove it. Didn't actually blueprint the right side of this, but we do have the, um, the build in the actual game. And it'll take just a moment because of all the signals. Talem Grandmaster, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. And delete. Fantastic. All right. So, blank data cards. Uh, well, first of all, I'm going to want standard input and output, most likely. That's not the kind I'm uh, referring to. Let's get the space version. And I'll just double check that does indeed have the scaffolding and connect properly. Interesting that... So that rail wasn't connected right now, but I deleted and put back the uh, loaders in exactly the same place. Um, and now they're connected. Curious. Budgie Bum, RF Holloway, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Good morning to you. Um, so let's check. Blank data cards. Uh, blank. What's it called? It is empty data. Got to use the debug to find these things out. Um, and the first recipe it shows is one that recycles. That's not... There we go. Okay, advanced circuit, copper. It's just three solids. For some reason, I thought there would be... Um, uh, I thought there would be some fluids involved. Possibly because I remember my blank data card build from last game. I think it had... It was like recycling uh, cosmic water, I think, in the same block. Just double checking there isn't an alternative recipe. But no, this is it. Uh, it does have to happen in a space manufactory, though. Alright. Blank data. I guess I could have checked it this way as well. No, it doesn't show what it's made in. Okay. So I guess we just figure out the shape of it. Um, and scale it as much as we reasonably can. Oh, it was probably... It was because I was making polished data sto uh, storage substrates in the same block, because I don't think they go into anything else. Here we go, storage substrate. Um, there's two ways to make it. Both of them involve... A decontamination facility. One of them is much cheaper and gives us stuff back, although we have to deal with the stuff. So ignoring the cost of bringing water to space, this basically just costs water and a tiny bit of lubricant, uh, whereas chemical gel costs quite a bit more uh, petroleum. Not that we have any shortage of petroleum this playthrough. But it's still probably better to do it this way. 
We get the scrap and contaminated cos... Oh, we actually get all of the cosmic water back. As contaminated cosmic water, which, um... When you deal with it, gives back a little bit of bio sludge and contaminated scrap as well. Um, so it's pretty much win-win, except for the extra headache of dealing with the outputs. Uh, but more to the point, I need to double check. It does only go into blank data cards. Which it does. So we should probably do that first. I think um, this build is going to end up being about the same shape as last time. Decontamination facility, polished data storage substrates. And we've got one fluid in, one fluid out, so that just goes from one side to the other. Should be fairly straightforward. Let's see what sort of ratios we end up with. They're going to change as our beacons change. Unfortunately, I guess. One solid in, two solids out. Um, I think, if possible, I would like to have... The fluid input like this. Not steel mage. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That is realistically all we can fit under the beacon. Unless I made it a little wider and had like two here, which is not going to happen. Not going to do that in half a block anyway. Um... So, we've got enough belt here. Wait, how, how slow are the machines individually? I thought that was per second for a second there. Uh, less than one per second for each input and output. What if we made it go really, really fast? Uh, 7.5 per second. I'm guessing the super inserters could keep up with that, though, even if I did do that. Probably end up not being able to keep up with belts. Superior long inserter. And let's suppose it was putting stuff onto a space belt. Uh... Cosmic water goes here. We need some power and delete the output. Um, and don't forget the fluid output. Exactly zero percent. Um, yeah, it looks like. Even if we were to go crazy with the modules, um, a superior long inserter could keep up. Good to know. And that's even considering that the scrap is one whole extra swing every once in a while. So we're looking at considerably more than 12 items per second that this can put onto a belt. Not bad at all. Making all the basic space stuff today, indeed. Um, so I'm not going to worry too much about... Well, actually... What if I did maximum speed but with efficiency? What would the whole half a block look like? X consumption to megawatt. And there it is. Okay, so we have 24 machines, 8.4 per second each, 201.6 per second, uh, which is like a bit more than four space transport belts, but if we go the super belts, it's like 
less than three. Yeah, I don't think I'll ever go that fast, but uh, this layout seems pretty good to me. All right, so can we actually get away with? Just doing the fluid pipes nice and neat like this. Space pipe to ground. That actually leaves exactly enough room for the beacon. Uh, but then the inserters wouldn't have anywhere to go. That's a little bit of a problem. I could put these two further apart. Or could I? No, I think we need to do the all space pipe underground, kind of like this. Let's do it more to the north on this side. And more to the south on this side, except that won't quite reach. Which means we have nowhere for inserters on this side. Uh, I think I have to put them further apart. Hmm. I'd really like to fit them in one side of the block and not have to move the... Uh, Pylon substation. Let's see. Um, if we... If we don't have to worry about the beacon on this side... I think the input belt can be further away, since it only has to pick up one type of item. And output. How fast is this? Pretty slow. I guess the output would go here. So that's really not an issue. Except how many tiles does it take? One, two, three. If I move all of this over one tile. How does that look? I think there's just enough room. Oh wait, that's one extra tile. But can we make it work in the middle? To uh, Toten? Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I could always get the fluid in at a different angle, but I don't know if that would necessarily save us that much space. Um, if we have input, output, I could always just not connect the outputs across the wide area beacon. Connect them, like, up here and somewhere else, for example. I'm pretty sure the fluid throughput is relatively slow. Four per second for per machine. And what if we go ham with it later? I think it was this many... Um, 24 machines, 
it's still only a thousand per second, which if we have a pair of pipe routes, uh, won't really be a problem. So then, oh yeah, and I think I remember dealing with the contaminated cosmic water on the spot. Who knows if we'll fit that easily, though. I'm doing the wrong search, aren't I? Um, you can actually just void it, but we're not going to do that. If we don't consider that it's 7.15 in the morning and I haven't gone to sleep yet, doing very well. Okay. Hope you have a good sleep today. Um, I think I remember not needing that much. Is it in a decontamination facility? Yeah, here it is. And we get, we're going to get scrap and contaminated scrap out of this block if we do it like that. So how fast does one of these go? 40 per second? So it can keep up with 10 machines. And we've got 24. I would need 3. And it would have, they would have to be under the beacon. Hmm. Should I just export the contaminated cosmic water and the scrap, though? I already did a block, um, I think, that does recycle contaminated cosmic water. And it does make the block more complicated if we have to drop off, oh, get rid of contaminated scrap as well as scrap. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking we'll do our scrap and contaminated cosmic water output here. And just deal with it in another block. I vote new block for decontamination, that way you can send all your dirty water that way, yeah. Um, this thing will have relatively high throughput, or rather it'll work continuously, because blank data cards. But the throughput is not going to be that high. For the water, that is. Okay, so let's do this, and we'll need some underground space belt, and then the exact opposite on the other side, I think. Um, that looks about Right, why can't I click it? Seems good. Yeah, we just have to get the contaminated cosmic water. It doesn't have to, uh, this contaminated cosmic water up here needs to find its way down here, that's all. Which I think we could do fairly easily. Um, so it's just polished and cosmic that comes in. We've got three...
Hmm. I was hoping I could fit the huge storage tank here for a quick drop off and not get in the way of the belts, but I don't think it's really going to work that way. I don't know if this is 100% true, but someone found that there is a UPS gain from not having placements within two tiles of rails. Something with bounding boxes. That's weird. Verk. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Pardon my voice, still trying to warm up. I don't feel too bad, but apparently I'm a little more sick than I thought I was. Um, it's a pity that doesn't... Oh, it does line up. Cool. I think I would like for this to connect like so. Perfect. And obviously this one's going to be a bit different. How many towers is this? Six. Uh, let's do a seven over here and see what we get. That's better. It's actually pretty damn neat. Um, so then I want the contaminated cosmic water up here to find its way around this way. Seems good. And... We're going to need to filter out outputs here. I might just do another 2x2 two two box. It's kind of a cleaner way to do it. Mr. Ray Ray, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How you doing? Um, what's our overall throughput? 19, only 19.2 polished data per second. How fast does this consume at 32? Yeah, now that I think of it, I think I remember having very few of these machines on the right side. This is actually 16 per second. Ant crawled into my drink. Gave it a bit of a weird flavor. Um, just to keep the sides of the belt without having a splitter. Would do this. I think that looks weirder than the alternative. So, splitter. Like so. Could probably move this up a tile. And block the left output. Okay. Oh wait, where is this going to get through if I do that? Answer nowhere. Unless I do a pipe connection over here. Don't really want to do that. Okay. I think I would like the fluid to be on the close side, though. For the unload speed. I 
just wish I had a way to do it. And also merge the inputs from these two. Just for balancing reasons. Oh, this one's a neat enough connection. Alright. So, input... That's going to be a little inconvenient. But I move it all over one tile, and then this wouldn't line up. I kind of want to do it like this. I may just swap these inputs and outputs. For the look of it. We've established the long arms won't have trouble keeping up anyway. Less than one per second. I think I looked ahead and the superior inserters are actually not that far off. In fact, if I cobbled together Atomic Science 2, I could get them right now. We don't need them that soon. I think I'd rather build this out properly. Uh, but good to know that we can definitely get those soon. And Toten, thank you for the follow. Maholic, thank you very much for the raid. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Welcome, raiders. How's your stream today? Veldak, good to see you again. Thanks for the shout out. So I don't have to type it myself. Alright, so that's our IO swapped on that side. It was a stream of two halves. First half no mic, Sag. Second half good, okay. I'm glad it got better. Andy Gaming, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. How's the designing the cosmic going? Uh, pretty well, I think. Well, this is actually polished data, so we can do blank data cards. But yeah, pretty well. Um, that actually is sort of more symmetrical now, too. I like that. Alright, so this goes here. And this goes here. How many tiles is this, I wonder? 9, 10, 11. That'll have to do. And then this one. What's that, a niner? Oh, it's eight tiles. Ravna. Alright, that seems good. And we need the scrap to find its way down here. Um, I think I'll just do it like this. And we'll say... Um, hmm. You know, we can make it work this way. We'll just limit the back instead of the front. And we'll say that there has to be, like, a train load and a half of scrap before we come pick it up. All right, take care, Toten. And we're only going to let long trains pick up scrap here. Well, I guess we could allow short trains, but... um, I can't see myself wanting short trains carrying scrap around. All right, this is going to be an active provider. We want to get rid of whatever we have here as soon as possible. High priority. 
and it is for scrap and contaminated cosmic water. Foolish Rawa, thank you for the follow. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Uh, I also want... 50-50 this to come down here. And this can go over here. Oh, that's unfortunate. Oh, that's very unfortunate, aesthetically. I could move the uh, signals over just this once. It wouldn't actually make a difference to where the trains can fit. Just to keep it a bit more aesthetically consistent. Seems good. Should probably test this thing. Alright, so... Now, input is... Cosmic water. And... Polished... Or rough data storage substrates, rather. Here it comes. Oh, I need a filter on this. Scrap. Too slow. Too slow. There we go. So now we've got our polished, uh, and we'll just deliver copper and advanced circuits by train. I no longer trust these to be connected properly. If we don't do it ourselves. Um, and we don't need any fluids on this side. So literally just... Hmm. I guess if I put the trains back a little bit, it would sort of fit a little better. It's fine. Let's be consistent. So copper, advanced circuit. We need 12.24 per second each. Oh, not each. That's for the whole thing. But that's before we make it faster. Don't worry, that has never happened on this stream. Don't forget the cables for the LTN, the loaders, etc. Good morning. One online. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. That's going to go there. Move those and put them back because they're not connected properly for some reason. And... That includes the scaffolding. This is going to be... What? Uh, this is going to be blank data card provider. Simple as that. And I guess we can allow short trains. Some builds won't need them all that quickly. We might have a reason to pick it up with a short. Uh, in which case, we'll bump that up to a train load and a half so that we don't have to have any smart circuitry on this. Okay, we've got all the room in the world to build this however we like. Stream has only been going 35 minutes. Give it time. How dare you. I'm shaking and or crying. Um, I think I would like to load these things with loaders because they'll eventually be going really quick. And... 
the actual blank data cards should be pretty slow, even when we... That's only 17 per second per machine. Even so, let's just do it with loaders, with these giant machines. Okay, so on each side... Well, I've got, like I said, all the room in the world. So let's maybe get these out of the way of each other. I could even do something like this. Oh, and I need to do the polished data storage as well. Polish. Um, I think I calculated that we couldn't fit it all on one belt if we go super into speed modules later, but we've got room to upgrade this. It's fine. Maybe I should belt it for that eventual upgrade. this many. Negative 80%. Power consumption, that is. So 24 times this is 201 polished per second. Uh, if we upgrade... Well, there's actually only one upgrade with the space belts. Uh, getting the advanced transport belts and the superior transport belts doesn't actually do anything for us in space. Hmm. Okay. So... 201 per second. All speeds in these ones, I think. And this one's going to be a little bit different. It's going to need more uh, efficiency modules. Apparently only one more efficiency module? There we go, that's double power consumption. 201 per second... Uh, 200 per second. Wow. That's, like, perfect. Uh, hmm. Maybe I should let these consume double power? 4 megawatt each is kind of a lot, though. 16 megawatt for all this. 26 with the beacon. Alternatively, we're looking at, like... 1.6 megawatt plus the beacon, 11.2. Except we'd need more of these to keep up. Uh, no, just barely, actually. That's like less than, that's like 5% slower. And it just means the polished would actually saturate reliably. It's also quite a lot of copper and advanced circuits to come in. So I think this is fine, actually. 200 per second. Um, I wouldn't be able to keep up with two belts of output here. So I think we'll swap this for a larger container. I just make some room in my inventory. Let's go with a storehouse, um, which I don't have room for. Fantastic. Alright, storehouse. And a 
even with the regular space belts, we could keep up if we so desire. But for now... Um, it's not going to line up the way I had in mind, actually. Isn't power in space basically free? Uh, more or less, but it still pays to to not overdo it. Like, we're looking at 20% power consumption, uh, plus the 10 megawatt for the beacon, versus... Let me just move this out of the way. If you really go ham, 130 megawatt. Um, 130 megawatt on one space manufactory, and then you actually have to keep up with the belts, inserters, trains, and everything, versus, I think it was 400 kilowatt. That's, uh, that's a pretty dramatic difference. Nothing's free? Yeah. Mobile phone and sausage fingers don't go together. Yeah, most of most phones I've got pretty big hands, so typing on a touch screen, those small touch screens doesn't go well generally. Um oh I know. Let's do it like this. Oops. And on the other side. Kind of like that. I could just put this down here so that we could have double the input. Um, and we obviously need our copper and red circuits. That's not lined up quite the way I would have liked. I could move it over a little bit. I'd have to move it over a couple of tiles at least. I think I should do the output. I was going to do the output maybe like this, but uh, I guess not quite working out the way I had in mind. Veldak, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Mizuzi, hope you like. Much appreciated, Veldak, thank you. Uh, there's really no, like, technical problem to solve left for this block. We're just trying to make it fit together nicely at this stage. Um, what's our throughput at the moment? That's a lot. But I'm going to start without the beacons. It's quite slow. 24. Well, that's more than half a belt. One belt for each should be fine. Let's work back from how I want to do this. Maybe like that. Probably have some undergrounds here for the output. Damsel, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Lurking, apparently. Only not. Alright, so this one is going to be, let's say, copper. And... It's just not going to line up the way I'd like it to. Oh, I could do, like, split belts going to both of them. What's the individual rate? 
Three and six, that's not that much. Uh, six and twelve. No, we could absolutely do a shared belt at first, at least. Just do it like that for the input. Copper and red circuit. Wait, which does it consume more of? Well, I guess it doesn't matter if we're using loaders. And over here... So, copper, red circuit, red circuit, copper. And we've got this input. And we just need some outputs. Why don't we just merge here? Not that I think the sides of the belts will matter. Wait, what? There we go. Oh, uh, and what's our throughput if we get lots of... Lots of modules. 48 per second. Less than one belt. Um, when it comes down to it. So, I'm thinking... Like this. Except I want to push it to the back first. Let's do an underground right about here. And a random auto save. Evil Plum, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, let's test it, make sure we didn't miss anything. Uh, we need copper. And we need advanced circuit. We need some super inserters. What's our rate at the moment for consuming these? Less than one belt. Definitely don't really need that part. Uh, but yeah, that'll be... Uh, wait, wait, wait. There we go. That'll be our blank data cards. Uh, I could move these a tile closer, I don't see why not. Bit more symmetrical. Looks okay to me. Alright. Let's remove all of these. Or I could right click them when we make the blueprint. But uh, it's kind of easier this way, kind of. Oh, we need to do the scaffolding. Tiny Goliath. Good to see you again. Oh, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I'll just put scaffolding here to show that we might put more belt there later on. That beacon is not in the center if you want to go full OCD. What, like the perfect center between these two? No, I'm okay with that.
Or do you mean the thing I already changed? Oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, no, this is fine. It actually sort of looks more like it's in the center, if you look here. Kind of. Uh, Alright, scaffolding time. Uh, let's go with... This one. Do all the little belts. But, uh, easy to miss. to kind of a bigger block over here. Looks pretty good. And I think that just leaves these big machines. Possibly. Koha, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Alright, do we have all these wire connections? I missed one over here. We need to do the station names and the LTN signals. This one's got the station names and signals already, so does this actually. Outputs are easier. This one is going to be... Uh, cosmic water. But also rough data storage substrate. It's going into a decontamination facility. And out comes polished. And then we need to request long trains only. We want rough data. Stack size 100, so 16k would be a couple of train loads. And cosmic water. 100k should be fine. And then over here we're looking for copper plate, advanced circuit, requester, going into big gigantic machine I can't remember the name of, space manufacturing. And out comes blank data card. Fantastic. Don't forget to actually request them. We don't need a fluid here. We do want long trains only. Uh, 16k copper. 
is two train loads and we might want to request even more than that considering how fast it goes through copper later on this is probably fine for now advanced circuits a couple of train loads You can place scaffolding in the entire block, then place space tiles from the editor menu to remove extra scaffolding. Could be worth a try to see if it's convenient. Uh, I guess I'll try it next time. But that is... looks like it's done for now. Alright, blueprint. Blank data card. Uh, don't really need the beacons yet, or the modules. And I th think that is probably it. Let's see if we can see any missing scaffolding. I don't think so. I think we got it. Uh, I said don't include modules. There we go. Three eight blueprint. I forgot to do the snap to grid. Looks good, and we can rotate it if we so desire. Alright, so that's our blank data cards. Now where shall we build them? Probably right next to our first build that needs blank data cards. Also close to our uh, water recycling. Cosmic water. I'm thinking right here should be fine. It should be the blank data cards that need to be delivered more often. Then again, we're going to be delivering to the, all sorts of places, so it's not going to make that much of a difference. Let's get our construction train, who is currently having issues. Let's get it to reset itself. Fraser K and Petrie Cottontail. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Did you get the train station names down south for the pickup? Uh, yes. Yes, I did. It takes a lot less effort to do the pickup stations with, uh... Uh, with LTN. Because the, uh... There's very... You don't have to put anything very specific in, uh, compared to the requester stations. Um, there's no figuring out how many of each resource is going in. It's just provide stack threshold, basically. Alright, where am I standing around? Over here. Do I have anything? I don't think it's going to make much of a difference, but I could help build this for the moment. Get the signals out of the way. And we need to start working on our coolant, which I might do here. No, I wanted to do it close to... I guess it really doesn't matter. For the inputs to make the thermofluid in the first place, uh, we really don't need that much throughput overall. It's more recycling the thermofluid. Um, but that said, this would be a bit more central. Well, we're going to do multiple builds of this, I think. I think here is fine for the thermofluid.
just too fast for me to catch it? Uh, yep. Yeah, because it really doesn't take much effort for the passive providers. Alright, we done loading? We're not. We don't have uh, inserters because I've been lazy and haven't put them in the auto crafter. Um, can we prod module inserter parts? Did we prod module inserter parts? Or did I like... That's electronic components. Where are the inserter parts? In this place. Here they are. Oh, that's for the local build. And we can indeed prod them. I've only got prod twos in some of these still. The more important stuff seems to all have prod threes. Uh, but yeah, did I use the auto crafter to make the insert? Oh, here it is, and they're not prodded. I'd feel kind of weird about putting them on a train though. We don't need a continuous throughput of inserters, do we? I mean, apart from, you know, all the inserters we're placing as we play through the game, but like... Is it really on the scale where bringing them up in a train to get the prod bonuses is worth it? I could always bring up the inserters themselves. Um, and there's a bunch of stuff I want to take from the mall upstairs, downstairs as well. Maybe I should make a specific uh, vanilla train loop that delivers stuff from the mall upstairs to the mall downstairs and vice versa with a multi-train setup. Might have missed my message earlier, but the space construction train has a cargo rocket and landing pad, taking up a whole stack each. This is true. We're not going to be using these anymore. Yeah, we can definitely um, get rid of those. Okay, looks like it's done loading. Wait, where did the inserter come from? I'm actually quite confused about that. Well, not complaining. Let's bring our construction train over here for now. Wait for... Actually, wait indefinitely. Because I'm going to have to give it orders after the scaffolding is placed. Alright, let's have a peek at our... Thermo fluid build... And I think I do want to try basically making it go counterclockwise because of how conveniently the pipes might line up with the hypercoolers. So we're basically going to do this mess. But over here. Let's add an LTN train stop. I uh, don't actually need that scaffolding. I just wanted this scaffolding over here. Oh, we do need a unloaders, actually. We got... Okay. Can I not hit this? Huh. What if I remove the space rail and I can place it anywhere? It 
looks good. Vanilla train between malls sounds like a good idea. Yeah. I just haven't thought through... Like, it's a, it's a two-way back and forth multi... I, I, I either want to do two multi trains. One to go up, one to go down. Um, that'll be easier because I've dealt with that logic before. Or I could do one train that does a loop. But then, uh, even more than usual, I don't know when I want it to make the decision to travel from one to the other. Because we, we can't just... I mean, technically we can, but I would prefer not to have it just constantly cycling through the space elevator. Um, not just because it's traffic, but because it costs us elevator cables, even if a small amount. And it's more interesting to try and design something efficient, even if that cost is pretty negligible. They're actually still going, placing the scaffolding here. Uh, are we out of scaffolding? We are. I might just fly back and grab some, so the train doesn't have to make another trip. And one of the nice things about this uh, construction train setup is I always know I can find scaffolding here, for example. Something like 60 seconds in activity and cargo greater than zero. Or cargo full. Hmm. I'm not sure about that one. Like, I would have to set... So we want to make it so that, for example, if there's no wide area beacons in this mall, trigger a train delivery, assuming the train has the wide area beacons. And then we want that uh, decision making to work for many different resources at once. And we also want it to work the other way around from the downstairs mall to the upstairs mall, right? Sounds like an interesting challenge problem if you need something went up, but the train is waiting to go down. Yes, it is a whole problem. So you want to build an LTN in vanilla? Kind of, yeah. Which, uh, spoiler alert, um, I'm using LTN for a reason. Alright, let's grab our blueprint again. Which one was it? Blank data cards. Fantastic. Why is... Oh, I did miss a bit of scaffolding. Okay. Does the construction train actually have the facilities? I think I got it to carry them. I could be wrong. No, I got it to carry the supercomputers. I'm surprised I happen to be carrying a few decontamination facilities, actually. Um... I wish I could see which wagon has some space in it, but it's probably the middle one. Decon... Termination facility... Only stacks to 10. I don't exactly want to put multiple stacks... ...of each... ...type. But we don't want to have to make multiple trips either. I should really get the, uh, come to think of it, without even doing anything fancy, I could probably make space cargo wagons. I don't even have to bother with the batteries yet, just to give it an extra 10 stacks per cargo wagon. We could do that immediately to help with the uh, construction train. Oh, do we have everything in place so that 
LTN doesn't lose its mind over here. Looks like we do. Alright, let's go back. And I need to pick up some heat shield, which we have. I don't suppose I could upgrade plans swapping out the uh, cargo wagons, though. Which, in that case, we should go here until... Uh, we should just wait here and swap them out. Philip B, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Why not just use the same system as with rockets and have a train move it? Um... The system with rockets counted on the the rocket being full was the trigger for the launch, basically. Um, and I don't necessarily want that for the train. I mean, I could do that. Just request stuff from downstairs, put stuff into the train, when the train is full, go. And then I could add some conditions whereby if any of the mall stuff that comes from the opposite mall is empty, uh, in that case send the train, but then I'd have to also check if that stuff is actually in the train. If you had two trains in a loop, I suppose you could set them to wait till full, or if there was another train waiting. Yeah, um, or if I just have two vanilla trains that go back and forth uh, to specific stops. I mean, it would take up more space with the stops as well, I don't like that. But it would probably be easier to design. Alright, I need some heat shielding. There it is. And you can just handcraft some space cargo wagons. And we'll get this uh, Frankenstein abomination locomotive running on fuel and space cargo. Well, actually, let me see how easy it would be to throw together the batteries on the spot. Uh, what are they even called? They're called something weird. Power pack. Uh, okay, we don't need any fluids or anything. Battery, lithium, battery, steel. And then what about refurbishing them? Does that have to happen in a different... Space train power pack destroyed or discharged? Destroyed is... Goes into specifically space train battery pack charging station. Uh, what about... What about the discharged? Discharged? Hold up, what? 20 bat- Oh, is it discharged when we make it? Yes, it is. Okay, so we have to make it and then charge it? And that goes into... Oh, some 1% of the time it gets destroyed. Okay. Discharged becomes charged. And then what do we do with the destroyed ones? We need sulfuric acid to fix it. So this is, this is kind of the detail that I expected that would make it a little bit of a pain to deal with in the mall. I'll put it off until we do a proper area to deal with this. Uh, but we do have... It looks really weird. 
We do have space cargo wagons linked to ye old locomotives now. Uh, and they have 50 cargo slots. When did you decide to use space trains? Um, I mean, I was going to use them for a while. But as for just now, I just want the extra 50 uh, cargo slots for our construction train. All right, let's uh, let it load and see how much space we've got left in all of these. I probably will want to bump up how much, uh, how many of these items we carry though, for some of them. More scaffolding would be nice. Rail is probably fine. I could do like another thousand scaffolding right now. I don't see why not. I could always bump it down. Let's just bump it up to 3k. It's another eight slots. What are we trying to load here? Space rail. Why don't we have space rail? Because we don't have regular rail. Because we don't make regular rail on the spot. I imagine. Um, where are we? Here we go. Were we going to deliver regular rail? We've already got it here. We may as well use it. Yeah. Rail. Um, just over a train load. LTN should be delivering that. Looks like the train is busy. Delivering rough data storage. I could hijack it real quick. Come over here. Wait for full cargo. And then... Wait, what are you doing? Go back. Oh, now it doesn't have a path? Destination full? Which one did I send it to? Oh, did I send it to the drop-off? Seems like the autosaves are a bit frequent. Um, let's turn that down a bit. 30 minutes. Uh, if I go further than that and something happens, I'm going to be sad. Yeah, that was the requester. Okay. Uh, please go to the actual pickup and wait for full cargo. And then come over here, wait for empty cargo, and then back to the depot. Fantastic. What's this flashing? Oh, it's because LTN doesn't have a train available. That's fine. Don't forget the robo-ports. You have rail coming up the elevator, indeed. Oh yeah, 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 the robo-ports. Do we have the same size grid here? Where are my... They must be in my inventory, right? Uh, the energy absorbers? Apparently not. Energy absorber. Nothing in storage. Even in the player character. Apparently. No! Don't tell me they got deleted. Did they get deleted? Vehicle RoboPort. Nothing in storage. Are they on the ground? Somehow? There's nothing on the ground. In the old wagons. Oh, that's why I have... Okay, 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 okay. 
That's why I have these separate one stack size wagons here. I think I didn't put down... Okay, thank goodness for that. I didn't want to have to remake them or reload. Alright, so this one and this one. Give it back. Fantastic. Alright. Do we have a larger grid? I don't think we do. And once more with feeling. That'll do. Fantastic. Still in the old wagons, indeed. So it works kind of like power armor, I guess. I'm almost surprised that a mod was able to do this. Okay. Uh, decontamination facilities. I think more than two stacks is a bit over the top, though. We'll just have to make it make multiple trips when it's a big build. Um, four stacks for space manufactories is a bit of an exception. Seems like we're ready, except for the charging part. I think everyone does that first time playing with train grids. I know I did, indeed. Alright, um, I may as well take over all of this stuff manually. It's literally just belt, decontamination, and space undergrounds. Okay. Off we go. Probably didn't grab enough belt now that I think of it. Yep, we need 125 still. Research stuck? Probably. Moving. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. I avoid grids. I don't like them. You mean the, like, power armor grids? That's what we were talking about. Belt by science. Belt by science? Oh yeah, true. Yeah, I could have just grabbed it from here. Whoops. Oh well. I was looking at chat. Always blame chat. A, B, C. City blocks? What's wrong with city blocks? They're doing their best, okay. Speaking of which, it looks like we will have blank data cards already. And chat blames the streamer. It's the circle of life. <laughs> We're thinking the same thought. Alright, I wonder where the beacon goes looking at this build. Cool, so we'll have plenty of blank data cards by the time... Oh, I forgot, we're asking for blank data cards over here. Alright, time to build thermofluid. Um, and I wanted to try... It's actually a lot of different fluids input if we use the cryonite slush. 
So we've got the one, two, three different fluid inputs. If I could somehow do four fluid inputs here. If we had long underground pipes, this would be very easy. I could do the pipe down to here, have storage for thermofluid, and this could be both a production place and a drop-off for 25 degree thermofluid. Um, but alas, it's not impossible if I pipe it around a bit different. And then I wouldn't have to have a different train stop over here. Did you want to pop down the elevator while you design so you don't burn life support? We're not burning it too quickly. I've got four life support equipments in here. I have... Actually, I only have 90 minutes. Oh, no, it's like two hours. Still not as much as I th thought. I don't think I've fully automated life support yet, either. Oh, 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 this reminds me. We have a name and base to redeem. Uh, let's see. We've got to open that up already. Two hours on 13 canisters? Yeah, it's a start. Uh, rewards queue. Here we go. We've got Sea Moogle. Wait, what? Uh, almost. Mm, the rock is kind of messing it up a bit. Let's put it over here. Fantastic. That's kind of in the way with the wires. Let's put down our pylon substations. Get in there, bots. Oh. Uh, rip four construction bots because I accidentally fired a rocket. Wait, what? No, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, it turns out undo can get rid of it. Uh, this is what I was looking for. Except I need to remove that one. one. Alright, pylon substations go. And now we don't have that nasty wire messing up this lovely name collection. Also, fortunately enough, the uh, the substations, or some of them, do reach the space elevator. I get almost 24 hours on 50 canisters. Nice. Alright, let's have a look at our thermofluid build. That's right, I remember I wanted to direct insert to this, just because we've got, like, three different uh, inputs, so it would take more than one belt. Mm. If I could just fit thermofluid drop-off here as well, somehow. Did you get... Petrie's name and base request. Uh, I did now. I've got it in the list. P 
Peach Tree Cottontail and Andy Yetikin. This up. And once again, Andy Gaming. Is this okay? Just saving the points. Do I need to come up with more creative ways for you to waste them? Alright, uh, back to the build. I definitely probably want something like this. Wait, is that not in the middle? I didn't put it in the middle. That's unusual. There we go. I won't stress too much about the scaffolding just yet. Actually, let me just remove it. It's going to be distracting. Okay. An oh no or equivalent sound redeem. Uh, Alright, I'll put that on the list. Uh, let me just find nope. my little list here. Beep, beep, beep. Good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I really wish the space underground pipes weren't so short and these buildings so large. Hmm. Which fluid is this? It's a uh, chemical gel. I could make this chemical gel. How fast does it go through these fluids? 1.6 per second chemical gel, that is really slow. So we're not going to have a drop off of that very often. Literally 100k, or more than that, per drop off. So... If... Oh, this goes here though? That's such a good fit. I don't want to change that. I was hoping I could have, like, these two connect and go over here or something. What are these canisters? What? Fantastic sound would be good too, <laughs> okay. I'm gonna make, like, a million takes of that before I feel happy with it. Um, I don't think I can do much better than what I did over here. Maybe I should just not do the direct insertion. any symmetry. I know I'm spending a lot of time on this, but I really want it to look okay. And I'd love to find a way for the thermofluid drop-off to be the same station as well. If I didn't use bulk rail unloaders, I could have more pumps connected here, or more to the point, just put the pumps in specific places. Maybe I should just give up on the direct insertion, put this further down here. We could have a thermofluid drop-off up here. 
We need one, two, three fluids to make it though. Let's try... Let's go back to the drawing board here for a sec. So if we had... Thermofluid drop off like this, for example. One of maybe cryonite slush. I could actually put cryonite slush right there. This is if I'm okay with belting these resources across. Or I could use a big container. That's not going to look that good. I just have to need three solid inputs. Anyway, what I was broadly thinking about doing is something like this. We can have one, two... different resources dropped off like so. Could I connect that across like that? Seems good. Um, we obviously need more more fluid storage than this. It's not really a problem. Some underground pipes if necessary here. And where are these two gonna go? What if... How far does that reach? Just barely across one of these. Okay. And then we need some storage room for the crinite slush, though. Um, I can't quite fit this here, unfortunately. We could look at the vanilla storage tanks. And then we can't fit this through here. I think we ran into the same problem earlier, and we went up this way. So it's coming together kind of similarly to how it did before. But heavy oil could go... Could go there, crinite slush could go there. looks pretty good except for the part where we've got no storage space for the crinite slush. What about an underground left to right under the middle top pumps? Under the middle top pumps. Like that. That kind of looks neater. Yeah, I kind of like that. But we still have the problem of finite slush storage. And I think that might make it harder to get the crinite slush out. If this could just reach one more tile, um, it'd definitely be a bit easier. What if I rotate this? 
I don't, I think that makes it worse actually. For the possibilities we have here. Hmm. Also taking up a bit more space down this way, but that's probably fine. If I only ever request 50k crinite slush at a time, and this has to be basically empty, no. It's never going to be perfectly empty. 100, 200, 300, 400, 500, and whatever this input is. Our fluid wagons are too powerful. I could actually allow short trains, but then, like, it's not like I can separate it so that only the Crinite Slush requests short trains. We'd start getting needlessly underloaded trains delivering here all the time. You could also cheat and replace solar panels with tanks. Um, I don't really want to do that. I don't want to go into that space with any of our builds. I guess I could make this smaller. Also adds a bit of symmetry. And then... Maybe... We can have 100k storage for the Cryonite Slush. Like this. And... If I do a pair of undergrounds like that. This won't contaminate. I think we got it. So we've got 2550, 100k storage for Crynite Slush. Uh, 2550, I need to add some more for heavy oil now. And that doesn't quite fit here. I would have to, like, do something like this, which is making it look a bit more... It, it already looks like a monument to Cthulhu. Um, so maybe this is fine. Less compact, four pumps into four tanks at the bottom, move factory down. Four Pumps into four tanks. Oh, no, because each cargo, each fluid wagon has to have one pump for each fluid type. It's very triangular right now. Bungie Mom, thank you. Yeah, I don't, I don't hate this. We'll tentatively say this is what we're going with. Um, and I'll just double check that stuff is connected the way we think it is. Cryonite slush. And this will be a drop off for thermo. Seems good. Yeah, that seems... I, I don't want to say very good, but considering what we're working with, I find myself saying this a lot with um, space explorations buildings. Uh, but considering what we're working with, I think aesthetically that is probably as good as it's going to get. Um, I forgot a minor detail, though. How the hell are we going to get our solid resources to this thing? Just make sure you connect the tanks to LTN, indeed. <laughs> How is Thermal getting to the main factory? Uh, there'll be a pickup for it. But this is 25 degree, we're not sending that anywhere else, we're bringing it back here. 
don't want to get overconfident, that's why you refrain from saying perfect or very good, indeed. Um, God. This is actually... Unless I use bots, this is actually kind of terrible. For the solids. Let's take a little break from this problem in particular. Um, because I also want... to figure out the others. We're definitely doing something more or less like this. This is going to be negative 10 degree thermofluid. That's not quite right, is it? Right, we wanted to be both a drop off and pick up. Maybe I should. I meant the big manufacturing. Can you insert to underground to the machine from the extreme sides of the wagons? Uh, you mean like a long arm over here? I'd need to have it. I'd need it to have a filter. I have three different things, solids, that I need to get to the biochemical facility. I'm thinking I should probably just abandon the idea of having all of this under one station. Unfortunately. Missed the three items, yeah. Might have to move the pylon substation a little bit for this one. I'm pretty sure we needed lots of these to keep up with the other stuff last time. I'd like to fit the maximum under a beacon. But we also calculated that if we did have the maximum under a beacon, uh, it would actually be stupid fast fluid-wise. I think. So this is how many? 72 machines, if we're doing the efficient recipe. Uh, 5.1k fluid per second. That's kind of a lot. One column alone, and we should really think of it as this is one column, because it's all sharing the one pipe output. So 24 of these would be 1.7k. We could definitely do it with pump span. But then if it's going to go that fast, the train... Uh, the train throughput is going to get a bit crazy as well, so we probably shouldn't even worry about that. I do want fast I.O. for our fluids here. So straight into big containers or out of them. Maybe I don't need to go with the huge storage tank for this. Still have tier 9 in the beacon. 
indeed. Uh, now the point of changing the orientation of this whole thing was to see if... Let's make this smaller. To see if these would line up conveniently. If we have a Crynite Slush drop-off... Wait, we've already got a Crynite Slush drop-off. But pumping it around might be... It's probably less of a burden than having two drop-offs for it. Probably. If the Crynite Slush came from here... Negative 10 degree thermofluid came from here, 25 goes back up here, and negative 100 goes down this way. It's probably going to be the neatest we can do. Um, and I wanted to have... Not rail at every quarter, but just up the north and south, possibly. So the output would go here. Maybe I should use the large storage tanks so that it doesn't take up as much space uh, horizontally. And we could have the same kind of layout on both sides. Zura Zoldik, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Are you good at the game yet? Obviously not. Terrible at the game. Uh, I think, I think I would like the stuff we're picking up to be on this side, because it would be easier to deal with the drop-off recycled stuff this way. And we can actually go for super fast loading and unloading if we do this. Okay, so I want the highest priority. Oh, I can even put this here. That's actually a pretty convenient fit. I want the highest priority to be to make it available for the rail network. And what's left goes to become even colder. That's pretty neat. I think I like that. Let's get rid of this mess. Build a rail just so we don't have the snap to grid built into it. And this way. How do you plan on requesting and providing to LTN from the same station with the same fluid? Uh, I've done it before. Basically. Okay. Maybe not. The use case was a bit different. Basically, we had coal liquefaction. And where is it? With coal liquefaction, you need some heavy oil to get started, but it's net positive on heavy oil. And I had heavy oil set up so that... Let me think. I think I had it set up so that if it gets low enough, there's a request threshold. And if it's high enough... Yeah, we just have a request threshold that is... Hmm. 
We have a low request threshold of, say, 50k, and a provide threshold that's like 200k. So when we end up with lots of heavy oil, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be that far apart. When we end up with plenty of heavy oil, it's available for pickup. And we would only actually request the heavy oil if it got empty. Um, in this case, we want... LTN can't schedule a train station to deliver from itself to itself, so we don't have to worry about that. But you might be right, this might not be possible. Um, I think last time I had one station for drop-off and one station for pickup at each corner. If you have fluid, you'll never request fluid since its signal is greater than zero, indeed. Well, if you set the request threshold to higher than exactly one train load, um, it, you could still request some. So I want to keep this... Uh, basically keep this side empty. Have a request threshold. Hmm. If I keep this empty, so, like, we produce the negative 10, we put it in here, it gets pumped to the provide side, and it gets pumped to our input. Like, there'll, there'll be some storage here, our input for negative 100 degree. And I could basically set it so that... What happens if I have, like... Uh, this is kind of tricky. Can I actually fit this here perfectly? Nope. It's one off. I knew it would be. I mean, it would still... It would still work. All of these pumps would connect to the same... Uh, the fluid wagons would connect to the same pumps. But I wouldn't love the look of it. It's a shame, because we came up with a pretty nice little layout here, with 200k on each side. What about staggered stations? Mm, I don't love staggered stations. It might make the most sense, though. Especially if we can avoid doing the crisscross thing. Then we do have a bit of room here. But if it's for two fluid wagons, which I want it to be for, then... That's not necessarily going to work out so well. So let's say this was the drop-off, and this was the pickup. One, two, three tiles back. That's obviously not going to work out the same way. I'd have to detect from the logistic train stop outputs. Could I, I, I could move all these forward to a couple of tiles, right? Hmm. I don't 
don't think there's a layout that I'm going to be happy with with that. It'll work pretty well since it's all the same fluid. Uh, also, this was like backward. Yeah, I, the thing is, I want... It's not about how much we have here in this use case. Not like the um, coal liquefaction. I want the trains to always be able to come here to drop off uh, X temperature thermofluid when it gets recycled. Um, we obviously don't want to... We don't want to pump new cold thermofluid into this system. Unless there's less than one train load available, perhaps. Maybe this will work. So if there is... We're going to have like a request threshold of exactly one train load. No, I can't get it to measure just this side. Without another train stop. Just recycle it at the consumer? No. So what about drop off at the top and pick up at the bottom? Oops, ignore that. Uh, okay. What if I have... Um... Okay, hold up, hold up. If I have a request threshold that's stupidly high... Well, not threshold, but a request amount that's really, really high... Um, request threshold, 50k, and let's say, cool thermofluid, negative a million. Yeah, I think that might be fine, actually. We have a really, really high amount of cool thermofluid that we're requesting. We make sure there's tons of storage. Um, we maybe request, we maybe set the request threshold to, like, just as much as we can actually fit here. Um, and we set the provide threshold. The negative number is going to interfere with the provide threshold, though. Um, because we're, we're literally doctoring the signal for how much cool thermofluid we actually have available. I'm pretty sure we have to do this with multiple stations. Which raises the question of what's the most elegant way to fit it. And I think that's probably going to be one resource for each corner. Um, but we could probably have loads of storage over here. So this will be a provider, this will be a drop-off. I'd love to do a consistent uh, build with this as well, if I can. That's weird. This is in the same spot, right? Oh, I see. I think 
think that's right. Yeah. Except I actually need to pump from this drop off to over here. Prime sub time. Prime sub time. Thank you very much, fat boy. Not so slim. Much appreciated. Thank you for the twelve months. Very, very much. And a welcome, welcome. Good to see you again. Hope you're doing well. Um, I could probably just connect these like so, really? That doesn't even reach that far. Okay, then. Uh, I think I could do it like this so it's not slushing around so much. And we'll load it extra fast if we're really... No, I don't like that. Let's just do it like this. It'll sort itself out. So we've got 50, 100, 200, 400k uh, fluid storage for both the input and the output here alone. Probably put some 3Bs over here. And... That's actually technically all we need. It should be, like, pessimistically about 12,000 per second that this will push when this is full and this is empty. That should be okay. Alright, so what if... What if we make every corner look like that? Where it makes sense. We'll probably have a thermofluid drop-off station over here. That'll simplify this mess. Probably back to what we were doing over, the, over here, more or less. Um, and then... This will look something like that. So it'll be 25, negative 10, negative 100, and then for negative 275, we're never dropping that off. Um, back at the... Back at the thermofluid production area. Or cooling area. Production and cooling area. Uh, that's just going to be output alone. With this layout, we've got quite a bit more storage room. Oh, not just storage room. We've got room for the actual production as well as the storage. Um, so if we... If we have our 25 degree thermoflow drop-off here, or maybe it could be the drop-off for production, either way... I think it's probably going to be easier if this is the drop-off for the storage. Um, so if that goes there... That way we have production goes this way, goes this way, goes this way, goes this way. And then... Oh, that's a little bit unfortunate. It's probably fine, actually. A fluid wagon can only accept three pumps at a time. Four will work with one idle pump. Oh, true. I forgot about that. Uh, 
That said, I don't know how I would necessarily change the layout here. It's going to look weird. Well, actually, the middle section is not going to... It's just not going to get pumped to. So I think... We could maybe do it like this. And then we're not wasting these bits of pipe either. It's four, I see now, indeed. Um, I find that throughput a little bit sketchy, potentially. We'll see. Wait, is that backward? Yeah, it is. Okay, so we got, uh, we'll have copious, uh, copious storage on the drop-off side that we always try to keep empty. I could actually expand that out a little bit more, and it might look a bit better. No, we can't fit a pump between those. I mean, we can if I move this down, but then we don't. That's fine, actually. Assuming they don't collide with each other over here. actually looking pretty good. So really fast drop off, pump to this side, loads of storage space. Keep the drop off empty whenever we can. We want to copy exactly that over here. Starting to look good. I was worried the symmetry was ruined, indeed. Yeah, no, I think, uh, I think I like where this is going. And then probably the same over yonder. So we drop off the stuff to produce. We put the 25 degree thermofluid here. Uh, we cool it. Whoops. In this general direction. We store the negative 10 here. Uh, and here. Wait. This is backward. So this is the drop-off, and this is the pickup. So... Just turn these pumps around. And all of this is negative 10 storage. I'm okay with that. Except we'd have to... We would have to pump... We would have to make quite a lot... Before any of it comes down to the next block. Or a quarter of a block.
Let's uh, let's see how we can fit these things together. Let's start with the thermo fluid, and once more we need three things dropped off: a solid, and three things dropped off for fluid. Congrats on partner, my fabulous factory, funny, fascinating, fashionable, famous, fearless, finest friendo. Fantastic. Mike Lat, thank you very much for the four months. Very much appreciated. And thanks for all the congratulations and everything else as well. Much appreciated. And good to see you again. How you been doing, by the way? Yes, indeed. Talked into it by my clat and friends. Thanks again for that. Good funny was able to stream again. Nice. Um, could I just steal this design? Is it going to fit? Maybe. I think it actually does. Also, the thermofluid output happens to go to this side as well, so that works. So we've got... Cryonite Slush. Thank you, Crazy Heather. And good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Koha as well. If you have verticals, you could use the bottom half of the right side for some inputs. Bottom half of the right side. Uh, I don't know if I'm following. Which one's this? Chemical gel? Actually, there's no reason to get rid of these test inputs. Uh, this one is... I think I did the wrong thing over here. Yeah, that's supposed to be heavy oil. This one is actually chemical gel. And this one's heavy oil. Uh, and then we've got iron, copper, and sulfur. Need some uh, I can think of one way to do this. We'll just set filters blacklist. And put all three in here. Seems like it'd be more than enough to keep up anyway. That's our thermo fluid. And we want that to go here, I guess. I don't really want the produced thermo fluid to go anywhere, actually, except straight into making negative 10. And we should have a pump to control when we do that. Um, I'll probably want to move this uh, pylon substation down. Let's see how we can fit this together. Pretty well, actually, I think. Let's 
So we want the... I'll probably move it over a bit. Demo can be downloaded. Indeed it can. This is a huge overhaul mod, indeed. Deneki, welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Want to start playing this game, but it seems so complicated. Yeah, what you're seeing here is way beyond vanilla. I mean, not that everything in vanilla is simple, but uh, this game adds a uh, this mod set adds a lot of complexity. I need some sevens, I think. Could we then put this over here? Maybe a 3B. Why can't I? Oh, that's the output. Dup. In that case, give me a 5. And one of these. And maybe the same thing down here. What's the input? There's not going to be a convenient length for these ones, I think. Unless... No, that's adding two. So I'm pretty sure... Five, six... Yeah, it's going to be the same problem. Okay. Move this beacon as far to the left as this. And continue this pattern as far as that. And what's our theoretical rate here? Well, let's ignore the modules. Since it's only going to be speed, the ratio will stay the same. We are very negative on 25 degree thermofluid. Uh, but actually, this isn't how thermofluid works. A bunch of 25 degree thermofluid comes back. So I don't know why I was even checking that. Is the manufacturing fast enough to warrant two outputs? Yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> not even a little bit. Um, what we can do is have our thermofluid processed like this. We should probably have a pump. And another pump. I don't know if that's going to be fast enough when we beacon it all. We can probably come up with something, though. Like another pump over here or somewhere. I could even bring it round this way. Um, but let's say we have exactly 50% thermofluid in these containers. I forgot how big the, how greedy the inputs for these things are. Because the recipe is so big as well. Oh, uh, and we need this to connect to same. Now all of a sudden the layout is not that convenient with the biochemical facility. Um, but this will have to do. So I bet... oh. Can I do it here? There we go. I basically only want to be creating thermofluid, like new thermofluid, if we're quite low. In fact, since we're pumping it into here, uh, we basically only want to create new thermofluid if this is all but empty, which it is. Let's say if thermo in that one container. Is 
is less than something. We're actually going to have to connect all of this though. For LTN. I could only connect this side for the LTN drop off. There's really no need to connect all of these. So yeah, we can just check if this one has less than like a hundred or a thousand. One thousand seems okay. What's well, one fiftieth? Is it pumping? Oh, I connected it to the wrong one, I think. No? Uh... Oh, it actually has 7.5k, that's why. So once that gets low enough, we'll create more thermofluid. Uh, we want our outputs here. How fast is this before we beacon? Pretty slow. Um, so until we go crazy, we don't have to add pumps, really. Is it... how many tiles is this separated by? I think I should just do undergrounds here. Okay, that's our output. We'll obviously want to add some more pipe connections when we make things go faster, but that should be fine for now. I should leave that there so I can measure out where the other beacons are gonna... Oh, that could be a problem. If I want to beacon these other two builds... No, we can just barely get away with it. We can limit the input to the space assembler instead of output pump. Uh, the biochemical facility, that's true. If we can reach the wires... Oh, we can. Okay, yeah, I kind of like that better. We don't really need a pump here. How many tiles is this? It's eight. Um, alternatively, I could just allow it to go to here. Doesn't fit together that well. Oh, wait, no, I can do this. That's definitely a bit of a cleaner look. So we're just going to say thermo fluid less than, say, a thousand. Basically, if we're empty on thermofluid, we're going to make more. And then we want hypercoolers to make negative 100. Uh, we need to get the cryonite slush down here somehow. We also need a layout for a consistent... I could always put these in another rail block. I don't really want to, though. Cryonite slush. We can actually pull that from here, not too... without too much trouble. Twenty-five degree thermofluid is going to make its way back this way. I think this is too close together because these two are different. And we fit... I don't think we can reach... Oh, we can just barely reach with the underground pipes if I do it like this. Condition on the negative ten output. 
Um, negative 10 output. Yeah, probably. I'll need a pump for that. And, uh, Junior, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I think I just want to go until this is full for the negative 10. Make this one unconditional. If coal thermofluid, or I could just go until there's one train load here, or two. But wouldn't that end up with this being empty and this won't take any? Uh, I'll think about it. Okay. I think we need... If we were to keep up with this entirely... 464 cool thermofluid. Uh, 400, 560. Oh, wait, that's 480, if we have 6. Bearing in mind that some of the negative 10 will go to other builds. But also sometimes it comes back as negative 10. I think I want to go for six of these. And now for the really tricky part, trying to fit all these together. I can underground pipe through here, but then this wouldn't have room for an output, so that doesn't really work. I can't fit an underground pipe here, unfortunately. Uh, what if it looked like this? I don't love that. There was a layout that I came up with last playthrough. I could steal from myself for that, but I kind of want to figure it out again and or come up with something better. And I think they were in perfect squares, so this far apart. Obviously, these could connect. Is this an even, I mean, an odd number? It is. These could connect. Some of these could connect by underground. Like the output. We also need Crynite Slush. Which is slower? Probably the Crynite. Yep. There's a three pipes that's left over from the old chem lab output. A three pipes. Oh, this thing? Daily reminder that bungee gum contains the properties of both rubber and gum. Oh. Oh, and we need the 25 thermofluid to come out as well. This actually looks kind of neat. And I think it literally couldn't be closer together, right? I'm actually liking that quite a lot. Uh, and do we have room for a beacon? We could probably beacon... 
Nope. I don't think we could double this for the Ryan, uh, for the negative 275. Does the layout work out the same though? It looks like it does. So I'm just barely not... Well, also this... These two... Wouldn't actually be a problem. The beacon sadly doesn't quite touch all of them. Um, theoretically, since a bunch of negative 100 gets used, it's not all going to go to negative 275. So we could just have the one beacon down here if we have like four of these to go to 275 degree. Where's the middle? Oh. Here-ish. I kind of really love that layout. Um, and we need... 25 degree thermofluid to make its way back in here. Oh, actually... I want it to make its way back into the storage, so... This thing's in the way. I think we will actually need these bits of pipe after all. And... There's all sorts of places I could connect this, but... I'm thinking we do it around about here. do a fiver up here. This won't connect because this is a nine. Kind of looks like it would though, so let's do a seven. And it's going to need at least a couple of tiles. I think I'd like this to be a three. Oh, never mind. Alternatively, I think I should probably have a pump here, actually. And maybe another one up this way. Hey, what are we doing today? Cold liquids, indeed. Johan Anderson, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Um, I definitely want to connect one set of these, input or output, by the underground pipes, I think. So... That actually reaches... Cool, let's do the input this way. One, two, three. Bear in mind this is a different recipe. And we could actually connect this right here. Which means I could put these closer. But we would kind of ruin the symmetry of it, I think. But I kind of want it to be a, a visible break between these two, so we know they're separate recipes. One off, if I do that. I could put a pump here. I don't think we really need to. about this. I think I will put a pump there. Cool. 
So now we take our negative 10 thermofluid. We need some power here for the testing. Much better. I think you'll bottleneck on cooling liquid throughput. Well, there'll be a bottleneck somewhere. Just have to tweak it. I also need... Well, that... Hmm. Never mind. I do want all of the negative 100 to potentially go to the rail system. If I move this over one tile, that actually works out quite a bit better. For this part. And probably this part. That's actually perfect. This does connect, though. Cool. I don't know how much we're going to be able to scale this up by putting pumps in various places, though. But I'm kind of really, really happy with that particular layout. Now we need some... Oh, let's put a pump here as well. So we can sort of prioritize this. Why is it not working? Because it doesn't have input. Wait, this is output. It does have input. Oh, because I am bottlenecking everything on the actual production. Because I wanted to test this, which is working just fine. So let's say we have unlimited thermo fluid. It looks like this does get input. I can't move this over a tile, otherwise I would consider swapping the direction of these, just so that those pipes line up. But then I don't want them to line up with this, never mind. Never mind. Okay. There's our first cool thermofluid down here. Let's get some cryonite slush. We don't need a whole lot. Can't quite make it fit perfectly though. At least that's nine tiles. This is 15, 16, 17. We could do five, five, seven. There is our negative 100, um, and we need it to go here as well. Did you want to be able to upcycle the returned negative 10? Uh, yes, so that's going to come in here, which will get pumped into here which will not go here yet. Um, I think I want it to be like roughly equal priority. Like if I put a pump here, it's obviously going to take a lot. This is going to be full before this gets anything. Uh, I think I'll put a pump down here, perhaps.
Uh, and this is supposed to be drop-off for... Do we ever get negative 100 as an output? From a recipe? I th There's probably like one or two. No, we don't. Huh. That kind of simplifies things a bit. So, negative 10. There's 11 recipes, including, I think, 3 recipes to actually just cool the stuff down. So, uh, 8 recipes that spit out negative 10. But there's actually nothing that does the negative 100 as an output. Which means we don't actually need this one. So this is negative 10 drop off, negative 10 pickup. Um, not that it saves me any trouble, really, but I don't need this rail. It does make the build a bit more symmetrical with the rail. And it does mean I have more space over here if I really want, but I don't really see what I could do with it that much. Fastest consumption of SE is 100 of negative 273 per second. Indeed. How fast is this without beacons? 160 per second. Uh, and we will need this to come down here, of course. Uh, also, I haven't updated this side. Nothing's coming back as negative 273. So... But I think just for the consistency of it, let's put this here. Um, and I don't really see the harm in having plenty of storage for negative 273, especially when stuff gets done in a really bursty way sometimes. As long as we're still building the base. Okay. So that one's fairly obvious. This one has a little zigzag. don't need one of these styles. The last two thermofluids, there's no dropping off back to this block. That's some pretty copious storage. I think if we've got this space anyway, it's gonna look it's gonna end up looking a lot like my old build. If we've got this space here anyway, and we've got this that depends on the negative ten, we might as well have the drop off here and the pick up here. So we're pushing it from here down to this way. So in that case I don't actually need this here. I don't mind having the 25 degree over here though. This will 
be a drop off. Can get rid of this mess. Station's not going to exist. Get rid of the crisscross rail. Did I leave a bit of straight rail over here? Nope, seems okay. Well, rip semi symmetry, I guess. Because this is going to be over here. Uh, we're going to need to pump this way. And that is 25. It, I was going to say it lines up very well, but that's not true at all. one-off also. Hmm. Feels like I should use that space for storing the 25 degree. consistent that way. There's no pickup for 25 degree though. Okay. Something like this perhaps? And then goes into here. Of course, it doesn't line up by one tile. Could I put this beacon down a tile? I could. Move all of that down one. Potentially. That's going to mess this one up. Whatever. It's not going to create any extra connections, is it? Oh, it is. Never mind. We'll just have to have a little squiggly pipe over here. Uh, and this goes here. At least there's a pseudo-symmetry to this part. Don't need that. I'm going to be honest, I don't love the finished product, but it's really, really difficult to make something look nice with this mess. Cool thermofluid. Oh, it's all pumping into here first. Hmm. I do want it to find its way here as well. Uh, in fact, I could maybe Pump it there directly as well, even. No, that's fine. Alright, so we've got 25 degree that we're not getting rid of now. Didn't actually end up moving that. Oh, 
happens if I get rid of these pumps? How fast does this go? Uh, we do have a few more machines than what this can keep up with. But we do have a bit in storage. Looks like it's doing okay. It's definitely working at least. I really like this layout except that I don't think I'm going to be able to upgrade it with pumps to the degree I would like to. Then again, the way these connect? Maybe. Perhaps. In any case, we've got a functional um, thermofluid build now. Alright, so... This is a provider, actually. These two are providers. This is a requester. This is a requester. This is a provider. Looks good. It's got symmetry in four-dimensional space, indeed. Requester, requester, and provider, provider, provider. Here we are requesting... how much thermofluid can fit in here? 50, 100, 300k? Should be enough. Feldak, thank you very much for the gifted sub. Much appreciated. Again, thank you. Razor, okay, hope you enjoy it. 50 in total in the channel, Veldak, you absolute legend. Uh, I cannot really thank you enough for that. Much appreciated. Uh, I could see a universe where I have short trains pick this up. And it really doesn't matter with fluids, like, it's, you don't have to do anything special for it. That's huge. Yeah, it is. Captain True, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. One tank on the bottom left never seems to fill. For which fluid? I mean, it'll take a long time for it to saturate like that. That's okay. I want to have copious storage. Um, I'll probably have the exact same settings over here, except we are looking for negative 10 degree thermo fluid. Make sure we connect it to LTM. And let's name our station in the same fashion, but negative 10 degree. Oh, um, we definitely want this one to be a low priority. Just lower than normal priority. So just, just negative one. Because we want the stations that actually want the negative 10 thermofluid um, to receive it directly. Also... Yeah, 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 we need to pick up. I need to do, uh, what is it called? Uh, I need to do encoded network IDs for these two. We're going to do one and two. As long as they're on different virtual networks, so these two stations don't interact, that'll be fine. Uh, short trains and long trains are fine. Provide threshold 50k for the long trains. Actually, I should check how much the, um, the big fluid wagons do. I think it's 60k. Oh, like 30k each. 
Storage volume, 25k, 30k. Alright, I should start upgrading. Other than some items sitting idly, um, there's really no harm in having larger thresholds ahead of time. I don't want to have to come back and change them all. Alright, so our thresholds are all going to be 60k. Short trains or long trains are fine. And this one's just a provider, so I don't need any other signals. This will be negative 10. And we'll need to tell LTN what we've got. Uh, and I want to pump it over here so that it's not like the train can come looking for thermofluid and some of it will disappear. Alternatively, I could have the pumps on this side and just have a higher provide threshold, but I think that's a bit sketchy. Hmm. That makes sense, I guess as long as these all work. Alright, so I don't want to tell LTN about this stuff, especially because it's still available for turning into negative 275. And I could let LTN know this is here, but it might load slower. Alright, so this is going to be negative 100. Provider. And negative 273. Different network too, indeed. Looks like the negative 10 provider train stop is missing pumps going from the right tanks to the left. I think I got those, yeah. Have you tried LTN Combinator Modernized? I have not. Creative Mischief. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. Add special combinator that has a GUI. That's fine. I can manage with this. I also generally like to keep things relatively close to vanilla um, for people learning things from my stream. Not too many weird exotic stuff. Or grammar for that matter. Evidently. We're going to need some more rail signals. up here. Seems good. Um, so yeah, I guess that is thermofluid. Or at least it's a decent first draft. It'll work. Oh, wait. Uh, we don't actually have the the upgraded thermal radiators yet. What? Let me just remove all these. Is that backward? Yeah, it is. Um, I am confusion. This goes here. 
Oh, and there was a beacon here. Need to make a request for the biochemistry facility as well. Good call, thank you. And I'm going to have to scaffold everything also. All right. Uh, how many stacks do the new trains have? The wagons? 50. So, 100 is going to be our provide stack threshold. Although, one thing I do need to bear in mind with some of the builds from now on is that we can't actually fit eight cargo wagons of stuff. Um, it's actually six with some change into the bulk rail unloaders. What was the bonk for? Requester not pick up? Oh, true. Alright, 60k. Request threshold, 100. Uh, long trains only for this one. And we need sulfur. Um... I guess it makes it easier to do the math on what we're asking for our, from our trains. Uh, 50 times 100 is 50 hundred, 5,000. And we'll request a little bit more. Well, actually, I'll just do two train loads. Iron plate, same thing. And copper plate. Just double check that was indeed what we're looking for. Then we need heavy oil, cryonite, slush, and chemical gel. Heavy oil. It actually makes the uh, fluid math harder, though. Uh, 120k. Hold up. How much storage do I have? 100k. For each of these. So... We'll just set it to that regardless. Or maybe a little bit lower. 90,000. It's still a train load and a half. It'll deliver when it's down to 30k. Uh, Crynite slush and chemical gel. Chemical gel. And we're going to name our station. Um, iron, copper, sulfur, and three fluids. Requester. Biochemical facility, and we're making 25 degree thermo fluid. That was not crinite slush? True. Good catch, thank you. Aiden. Aiden Dai? Or Dal, sorry. Thank you for pointing that out. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. We did get that much right, though. We'll need to tell LTN what we've got. I tried to press E to rotate the camera just now. Uh, Veldak, thank you again for the gifted sub. Very much appreciated, thank you. Are the pumps configured? Uh, not yet. They do have red wire connected, so by default they won't do anything, so it won't cause any problems at least. But yeah, we need to say chemical gel less than zero. Heavy oil. Good morning. Less than zero. Good morning. And cryonite slush. Less than zero. Fantastic. Midden, thank you very much for the primary sub. Much appreciated. Five months, thank you so much. Uh, 
and thank you all so much for a lot of that today. We need scaffolding still. I was about to say, so is this it? Is this our build? But, oh. Okay. Let's do the pumps. For wait, wait, wait. What was... Let me save it real quick. Uh, what was that thing we were going to try to try and automatically deal with the scaffolding? I think it was fill the whole thing. And then we, like, change it we somehow change the editor extension surface. So that it behaves like space. And then we remove the excess uh, scaffolding. How do we do that? I think someone said it was in tiles. That doesn't sound right. Surfaces? I was going to scroll through chat, but... A couple of minutes have passed since then. What do we got? Remove all entities. I don't think so. I didn't realize that was an option. I'll bear that in mind next time. Andy Gaming, thank you very much for the 10 gifted subs. Much appreciated. And for starting a hype train as well. Thank you so much. And for all of your name and base redeems as well. I don't think I'm going to be able to find this option. Uh, what if I just... If I actually delete tile ghosts... No, that doesn't work. It's ghosts. Thanks for this, uh, uh, indeed. Cheers, Johan Anderson. been quite a day. Thank you all so much. I want the chew? The what now? Um, I have a deconstruction plan of her. Nope, it's going to remove all of it, I think. Okay. How do I do this? What did I just undo? Oh, no. What did I just undo? Pipe train conductor icon. Nice. I feel like 60% is scaffold, so just build it, then clean up. I don't want to have to carry and build, and especially have the bots build that much scaffolding. Um, I don't know what I just broke, so I'm going to go back. Thankfully, we just saved it. Alright, um, unless anyone has any pro tips on where the magic button is, I think I'll just do it the usual way. From the VOD, looks like not Steel Mage suggested you can place scaffolding in the entire block, then place space tiles from the editor menu. Space tiles from the editor menu. No one that would be under tiles, wouldn't it? Where on earth would I find out of map empty space? Well, we did just load from a save, so oh wow, that's trippy. We're just we're a whole wizard here at this point, just creating space wherever we like. We could do it this way. 
Well, actually, I could just... I, I don't think I have to be that careful about it. And then... Place scaffolding, like normal. No, that's not what I meant to do. Um, if I decon plan... That doesn't quite work. I guess I did do that out of order. Uh, so what if I put scaffolding everywhere and then place the space tile? Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Fantastic. I'd still like to start with this, though. There we go. Alright, scaffolding. Could I just place scaffolding as tiles? If I could ever find it. Space platform scaffold. It's actually really close to empty space. So now we don't have to worry about my inventory in the editor when I'm placing tiles. Uh, I think that's it. And then we place empty space over the same spots. That is so much easier. That's nice. It does leave little gaps in places where aesthetically I would like to fill in the scaffolding. But that's okay. Level 3 hype train. Nice. I think that We've had, like, three hype trains ever on this channel, from what I can remember. I don't know if we ever had a level three before. Choo-choo, indeed. Thank you all so much. Uh, choo-choo. There we go. If you fill it all up with scaffold, then you can use deconstruct filter to remove all unneeded. Oh, I thought... For a second there, you meant that unneeded was like a specific filter. Um, let me just fill this out a little bit. I feel like it looks kind of weird otherwise. Also, is it... Did this always have this black stuff? Oh, it does. Okay. I thought it was like holes in the scaffolding or something. I just want it to look a little bit less sketchy. I could probably fill this out. Maybe this as well. Alright, cool. I think I'm happy with that. Let's blueprint this thing. Hopefully we haven't forgotten anything. Don't need these wires. This is Thermofluid. I guess I could put all four of the icons. Tiles and train stop names. Snap to grid. 86.25.1. Looks pretty good. And let's bring it down here. 
That's my budget for gifted subs for the rest of next year. Oh my goodness. Uh, all the more so. Thank you very much, Andy. Tut tut, is there a different default text because of language? What? Uh, Midden, if I didn't say so, good to see you again. Welcome, welcome. Hope you're doing well. So where are we going to actually build this thing? Probably right next to the builds that need it. Um, I was thinking of doing it here. We've still got our construction train sitting around as well. Wait, that's not our construction train. Provide stack threshold 120. And some... Oh, I forgot to limit this. That's why. Uh, and now we've... Our, our one train is... Never going to bring the resources needed to continue this. Okay. Uh, let's build thermo fluid. I forgot to replace... the... Uh, I've got to place the old, or rather the new, the ones we don't have yet. The coolers. Let's get our construction train to park itself in range and wait indefinitely. Choo choo message is different depending on your language you have on Twitch. That makes sense. Left a cheat item on the blueprint. Is that so? Yes, we did. Not like we can build it accidentally, though. And here comes our construction train. It's actually got a few... There's like a handful of solar panels we haven't finished building here as well. But this will be thermofluid. Just for simplicity, I'll just have the one icon representing it. This is blank data cards. Apparently our bots are not doing anything. We have vehicle roboports. They have charge. We have construction bots. We have space platform scaffold. We have space rail. For a second I thought maybe somehow this entity was different because of messing around in the editor. But no. I don't... don't understand why the bots weren't active there. Very weird. Oh, we also didn't get this bit of scaffolding included to make the, uh, the bulk rail work. It's the only bulk rail station in this block. It's their first day on the job, they're stressed. I need trains with legs. Have it park here, get up on Spidertron legs and walk over to the middle of the block that it's trying to build. We don't have copper right now. We do have copper right now. Alright, are we just about done with the scaffolding? Fantastic. 
the rest should be built a lot more quickly. I should probably make a construction train specifically for scaffolding. I don't know, normally we don't need this much. Oh, and I never bothered to... Where's the thermal? Here it is. Thermal radiator. Thermal radiator. What? Didn't the blueprint say it was trying to make... Oh, it's trying to do a recipe that we don't have yet. Okay. That's fine. How many thermal radiators is this? 60, and we need... 10 of those, and a biochemical. Alright, let's just send you back for now. Research still stuck. Indeed. What are we missing? Astro 1, as always. It's infrared, because we don't have glass. I thought we dealt with this. We're definitely requesting glass. And we definitely have glass. So our train just hasn't gotten around to delivering it. I'm surprised it would be that way for that long. Maybe proximity matters with the LTN decision making. A bit more than I anticipated. Need more trains? Yeah, I do. I've been putting it off too long. Probably time for a second LTN train then? Yeah, it's probably time for a whole depot. I'd like to get at least this little production chain finished. So I don't have to, like, remember where we're up to, or deduce it. Um, they're gonna take my scaffolding, but I guess I don't care too much. Or I could just take it back like this. Alright. That should get science going for a while. I'm surprised how empty all of these are. I would have thought at least one of those had accumulated more than the others, but apparently not. How much more research is this? About 300, not counting productivity bonuses. So realistically, like 150-ish. How much glass did you request? I requested 9,000, which is a bit more than a train load. It's, it's 90 stacks. So, it's definitely requested enough. Just brought over about 8k, probably. Alright, and we need biochemical nope. facility. Just one stack. Are we not making pulverizers here? Nope. It's 45 stacks. Math checks out. Wait, what? Glass is... Oh, yeah. Glass is 200. I forgot. So, 17k. Oh, 
That'll fix it. And now we need... We've already got the biochems. Uh, I set it to make more pulverizers. I'm pretty sure I don't need to add anything to make the pulverizers get done. Steel plate seems good. Not sure why there isn't steel plate in here right this second. Um, probably because the LTN train... Yep, here it comes. Probably because the LTN train got stuck for a while because I forgot that one limiter over here. And it'll happen again if this doesn't fill up fast enough. If I don't move this from here to here. That's something to bear in mind. Uh, we also need thermo thingamajigs. Thermo radiators. 200. I think we've already got all of these prereqs in place. Oh, and uh, hypercoolers. Don't know if I have vanilla storage tanks here. Hypercooler. 15 should be plenty. And a stack of thermo radiators. It'll take a few seconds for it to switch over to the next recipe. Um, I don't believe we have the storage tanks. Apparently we're out of plastic. We are not yet requesting plastic. That's why. Plastic. 9,000. Made this for blank data cards. It has tier 9 modules. It makes... 1340 cards a, oh, per minute. It's still a lot. Uh, full speed, it eats 6 belts of iron, 3 belts of copper, 3 belts of glass, and 1.2 belts of red circuits. What an absolute monstrosity. That's a lot of belts. Beautiful. I think I just... I, I broke my chat. Deep belts, not space belts. Damn. Let me just fix that up. Well, today I learned if I press mouse 4 in that area, it totally resets my chat in OBS. I've got mouse 4 bound to jetpack here. Alright, uh, can we get the thermo things? Apparently not. No, oh, because we need the plastic, that's why. I don't suppose Train is bringing plastic as we speak. Let's go grab some. I could borrow this storage here to shove even more plastic in. That's probably fine. Oh, I bet what happened there is it's the browser back button. Probably works as a browser. Alright, where's our plastic? Don't you also need chemical gel input for thermo fluid? Um, yeah, probably. We haven't done that prereq, if that's what you mean. 